Today on CityCast Denver, you know the story by now. South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker bought the Disneyland of Mexican restaurants out of bankruptcy a couple years ago. They spent $40 million bringing it back to life, and now they made a documentary about it, Casa Bonita Mi Amor. So with the Pink Palace set to finally reopen properly to the public next month, we all saw the doc, and we're sitting down with one of our favorite regular guests to relive the incredible story before a new chapter begins. Today is Wednesday, September 11th. I'm Paul Caroli, and here's what Denver's talking about. Hey, welcome to the show, everyone. We're recording bright and early on this fine Tuesday morning. Um, I'm joined by our host, Bree Davies. Good morning, even though it's early. Good morning. And one of our favorite regular guests who is joining us remotely, um, which is different for us, from the People's Republic of Boulder. Welcome back to the show, Joshua. <laughs> Good morning. Yes, uh, I, I came up here and they took all my stuff and they said it's for the cause. <laughs> and you're a freegan now. <laughs> Congratulations. You're a dumpster diving freegan. You know, I was always dumpster diving, but now I'm just eating the food out of it, you know. So. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> Um, Boulder style. Love it. All right. So no, we're talking about something great today. Actually, we're talking about a great new documentary. Is it the best movie about Denver ever made? Wow. That's no. my, that's how I'm going to No. No. Okay. Well, I thought it was pretty dang good and I can't think of a better one. <laughs> I thought it was good, but it wasn't that good, but yes, go ahead, Paul. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Also weak competition in that category. Unfortunately, the passion of um, the Christ. We're talking. <laughs> We're talking about <laughs> passion of the cra- We're talking about the new documentary about Joshua's employer, Casa Bonita. It's called Casa Bonita Mia Moore. It's been playing all uh, over the weekend and now all week at the Sloan's Lake Alamo Draft House. That's where I saw it. And it's it's a story about a couple of uh Colorado boys made good. They went <laughs> off to Hollywood, they learned some tricks, and they came back and bought one of their their favorite childhood attractions and I, I mean, and you all know all, the and story. And saved all of our lives, Paul. Let's be realistic. They kept us all from dying in Casa Bonita. <laughs> I learned from that documentary. So thank you, Matt and Trey. It's a movie about like, what What if you could buy Mexican Disneyland? You know, just that just that idea, that magical, like as a kid, you go here and it's magic and you can be the person that not only owns it, but saves it. I think it's the saving that I really enjoyed about the movie. Yeah, I think that's like the core story of it, too, is like this this place was in such poor repair, which we all I mean, we've talked about this on the podcast for years. We lived this story. Yeah, but Paul, we did not know the extent of this danger that it was. Um, I mean, yes, it is a story of of two guys saving their childhood dream. I mean, we learn from it that it's really Trey's dream and Matt just lets him do it but <laughs> um but it's also the story of like <laughs> the whole time i was thinking how did no one die here like how how did no one either drown or die from a structural issue or a f- kitchen fire or i mean the 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 things that they uncover in there i were beyond what i could have imagined i had no idea how dangerous it was in there like just to breathe the air you know? oh my god the air I mean, it's every single, it's like we thought the food was bad. You should have seen the structural integrity. <laughs> the uh, the room where the divers come out of the pool. Oh, oh bizarre. And it's then hor- there is all of the like, high-powered electrical equipment. Like, we'd heard stories about this. I think this these were details were reported. But to see it, mm-hmm. to see the footage of how close this tiny little opening was, which itself was terrifying to imagine. Terrifying. Like my wife, whose who's, uh, claustrophobia was <gasps> triggered by that DCPA immersive oh. art show a couple of months ago, mm. she was having, she we, when we saw this together, she was like, she whispered to me like, it's, it's happening I again. Bet. Just looking at that little opening, like it's so scary. So my, my husband's best friend, Kyle, was a diver there in high school. Mm. And so he was, he was, he was not the level of shocked I was when they showed that. I was like, oh, oh my God, it's worse than I thought. And he was like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> took us backstage. That wow. was crazy. And I was like, yeah, your friend survived that. I mean, the thing was, it's not just a tiny hole. It's you have to swim underground and not get your, not just your swim trunks caught, your full pirate costume or your full safari costume or whatever you're wearing yeah. head to toe. 
praying you don't get snagged on one of those things because you'll drown. And then, like you said, you come out, Paul, and you're next to this was the key. Also, a very old Denver moment. You come out and there's this electrical panel with KBPI rocks the Rockies stickers all over (laughs) it. And if you (laughs) if you grew up here, that's like the metal like. That's like the heavy rock station. And I just, their theme song immediately played in my head when I saw those stickers. Dude, shout out Rochelle, too. Uh, she was the one that was giving the tour. Of, Is she the one that was giving the yeah, tour? Yeah, of, of the I... Death Trap. She's one of the gorilla girlies. She's still at Casa Bonita no. being a gorilla right there. So she's one of the, like, oh, wow. that, that, that sort of links the old Casa to the new Casa. Oh, I love that thought because I loved her chill. Like, she was just <laughs> like, yep, well here's where we come out and then we shower in this hole over here and uh oh yeah there's this weird buzzing noise coming from this other electrical thing but we're cool and i was like man she's just she does her job she knows what she's doing yeah so so joshua you mentioned that you uh you work with one of the people in the movie we i mentioned earlier you are employed by casa bonita sometimes wearing the gorilla suit Mm -hmm. um did you see this movie early with with Casa staff? Yeah, yeah. So we uh, there's a couple employee showings, uh, only a couple days before y'all. Um, but it was nice because it's kind of a group bonding thing. There's a lot of people at Casa that sort of believe in this, the, the idea of Casa. Like, they're very proud to work there. They're very proud to be a part of, like, those memories. Um, I think that's something that came out of the movie is that there is a shared idea of the essence of Casa Bonita, like what it is in its perfect form that a lot of Coloradans and even like, you know, Oklahomans and, you know, people around this area have of Casa Bonita in the good times that they had to sort of do the gut rebuild uh, and then still have that to like build towards again and everybody there's, there's just a portion of the staff that just, shows up for the love of the game like they they want it to be that essence of casa bonita um and so for those people myself included it it was really cool and a bonding experience to just sort of really see um because we know the, all the effort and the love and the tears and the joy that we put into it and just to see that reflected by trey you know and and even matt you know, forty million dollars is a lot of money, and 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 he was and he was doing it. You know, and and the smart thing would have been to walk away when it went from six to fourteen, and they kept it. They kept going and being like, "We're going to do this thing right because if we don't do it, um, it'll die." I want to get to the money thing in a minute, but I want to bounce off something you said, which is the the bridge to old and new. I have to say, it's the only thing I thought the documentary was lacking was I wanted to hear more from firsthand employees. I wanted to hear from more old school folks. I wanted to hear from, because like they did some of that, but as a person that's been going there for so long, I'm interested in the inner workings of like what it looked like to run that place every day Mm -hmm. beyond the entertainers, which was cool. But just like a little bit more of that would have been interesting to me to hear from the people. The pieces of that we did get though, like the the original co-owner, like the, the first black Bart, you remember those scenes, the yeah, old timers yeah. from that very oh, first era of so Casa good. Bonita? That was like the most emotional moment mm-hmm. when that crew came in, in. after the re- renovation for the first time and they saw it and they were, they f- clearly were feeling like this is, this is yeah. the Casa that they remembered from before it got run down and in such poor disrepair. Like that was, that was a gut punch for me. So emotional. Yeah. Um, Josh, what were you? Well, doing? I was just saying that we have we have a bus uh, bus boy that has been there since the doors opened. This is what I'm talking about. That's the guy I want to hear and from. And we have several service uh, staff that have been there, you know, 20 plus years. And so there is. And then uh, even on the entertainment side, it's not only is it Rochelle, all of the Gorilla Girlies, all four of them are old Casa. And so the character, the like Moko, he really is this link between wh- what it used to be and what it is now. It's I mean, it, it, it's crazy. Like. They the way they talk about it, like that, like they would like smoke weed on the top of the waterfall. They would like a, a, a lot of yeah. Don't bring a black light in there. You know what I mean? Like it's it's it sounded like the Wild West. I know. I, my husband was like, um, so we were with his his best friend Thad, who's been on the show, who's also part of this friend group from high school, and they were just laughing about all of the parties they had with all yeah. the divers that would come over after work and like hang out, especially the girls, the diver girls, and like. It was just like, it was a cool high school job to have, but also it was just like part of their lives in a way that I, I just like can't comprehend. Like they, they were behind the scenes of the magic all the time. And it was just like, 
you know, it was like I worked at Chili's, they worked at Costco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like so interesting. But they can come back now, which is, I think, so beautiful. All right, let's get into uh, another question here that I, I want to ask you two about. Was um, one of the big themes of the movie was Trey Parker, of course. We talked about he's. This was also the movie where I learned which who was who of the South Park guys. <laughs> Matt, Matt's Very the curly different. headed one. Trey is the one who has the, has the love of Casa Bonita in his heart. But so th- for me, this is like this is like a movie of watching Trey Parker like figure out how to define that essence of Casa Bonita that you were talking about, Joshua. Because they had this huge challenge of like bringing back the magic from the 70s and trying to like recapture that like very difficult to define thing that is what makes this place special. Um, I want to know what jumped out to you two about like watching him do that. Like in the footage we saw of him like trying out jokes, like throwing out ideas of like what to put where, how to, how to, how to make that magic happen for the kids. Uh, you see that you see a person who's put on a Broadway show before. I mean, that's what I saw. I saw somebody that understood blocking and um, character development and all of these things that he puts into what we know, you know, South Park, Book of Mormon, you know, various movies. Mm-hmm. I saw that process and it made me understand even more the enhancements that they've made and why they work because we had a ho- it's a Hollywood per it's a person that knows how to tell stories got in there and added to something without taking it out and you can see that he's a perfectionist I will say that I could say I could see where um Amber the I think she's a former entertainment yeah, she's, director she's, no, that was crazy yeah. seeing Amber just like pop up on screen ah yeah and she's amazing she's been around Denver for a long mm. time doing really cool immersive stuff already but watching her have to take his direction and pivot immediately there there was a point where he was like you know what all of these characters are in the wrong century we got to change this a hundred years and you can see amber's face go okay and she looks at the camera the the interviewer and she's like so we're gonna pivot and it's gonna be great but we're just gonna get there and you could just tell that she was just like her mind was just like how do i change everything we just taught these entertainers and so I could see where it would be hard to work with him, but also amazing to work with him because he has a vision and you see it in Casa Bonita if you're looking for it. But if you're not looking for it, it won't stick out to you and change anything. That's how I would describe it. Yeah. Vision and also standards. You know, it's yes. medi- mediocrity isn't good enough. There's there's sort of like there's something there's a there's something the point he wants to hit. And we're just going to work until you get to to that point, uh, which I, you, know, you got to respect, you know, that's why, that's why Book of Borman is so good. And that's why South Park has been able to keep the quality it's had for what was two decades now. Yeah. And, and to bring that to Casa has been really interesting. Yeah. I mean, our entertainment has gone through just multiple overhauls. Um, and it's interesting seeing that there's so many people that were featured on the entertainment side, like the new entertainment side that are no longer there anymore. Really? Yeah. And so it, it's, but, but that being said, we're like the entertainment department gets some of the, the, the fewest notes um, because we're sort of hitting, hitting, hitting where we need to be at, which is nice um, because we had to go through that growth process being like, all right, you're not in the 1800s, you're in the 1900s. And so, <laughs> So, all right, Paul, so get, what did to, you to, think? To, oh, I, I thought it was I thought it was just wonderful. I mean, watching him figure this out was fascinating. There was one scene, probably my favorite scene in the movie, where it was it was it was after they bought it, but before they figured out it was going to be this giant money pit. And Trey was just like dreaming, you know. I, I think, and he went to Acapulco with <laughs> yes, Dana we, Rodriguez. She calls herself we, Dana Rodriguez. We've been calling you. her Donna Rodriguez. Someone wrote in to like correct us on the pronunciation, but she calls herself Dana Rodriguez. So that's what I'm going to continue to say from now on. I'm glad you caught that, Paul. I caught it at the beginning of the documentary and I was like, okay, we knew. All right. But yes, Dana. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> he goes so with Dana to Acapulco. This kick-ass chef they brought in, Dana Rodriguez, um, who who is bo- born in Mexico. So they go to Acapulco together. Casa Bonita, like loosely inspired by Acapulco, which has always been interesting to me, like the interpretation of Mexican culture in this place. Um, so then you watch as Trey just like goes nuts in all these tourist shops and he buys a bunch of tchotchkes and things. And he's thinking about like, what is Casa Bonita? What is the essence of Casa Bonita? And then there's a shot of him on a bus and he's talking about Elvis. And apparently Elvis made a movie in the, probably the sixties called fun in Acapulco. And so you're watching (laughs) Trey pull up the soundtrack and it's, and it's Elvis singing these like cartoony Mexican songs. And he's like, this is Casa Bonita. It's white guys singing Mexican songs. And that was such an unlock for me. 
it it was cool to watch that process too, like watch him figuring it out. Also, his it was his dad's recommendation. His dad said, "Oh, you know, haven't you seen that Elvis movie? Right, where he, it's Elvis." And his and he was like, "What are you talking about, Dad? I've never seen that." And then you see him watch. You know, you see that he's like, "Holy shit, this is it." And you're right, Paul. That moment ties into what it is, which I think it kind of, I think it kind of, um, to me, it made. What Casa Bonita is makes sense in that it's not supposed to be Mexico. It's not supposed to be. It's a fantasy of a thing, of an iteration of a thing. So it's like, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but it just made it make more sense to me. I was like, oh, it's fantasy. Yeah, it's like, it's it's camp, but like on purpose. Yes. Um. Yeah, like yes. well done camp. Not not satire, but it's like, uh, and it. Yeah. And it's beautiful because he went he went to Mexico. So you have the real uh, the real inspiration. Like you need to be around authenticity. Yeah. You see an actual cliff diver right. jumping off the cliff in Acapulco, <laughs> <laughs> which is so funny in, in a Casa Bonita documentary. But yeah, go Joshua, go on. But, it, but it's like that's that that's that's what is the inspiration. And then you can beat camp with it. But you need to go see the real thing first. Uh, and, and so and there's things that he bought down there that I saw in the movie that are in Casa Bonita right now. And and so you, you feel that. And and the the cool part is like it's not I think the way that we viewed the cliff divers initially, at least I did, was I went in and I'm like, OK, they have a new choreography. They have these fancy new uh, swim gear that, you know, that matches. But I didn't. It, I didn't realize why it tied all together and made sense until you watched where he discovered it from, how they did. You you watch that moment where he's he's choreographing the cliff divers like Trey is and you see the sound cues and it just like, yeah, it just there's so many moments in this movie where you realize there's nobody else that could have done this other than these guys. You know what I mean? 100 yeah. percent. 100 percent. I mean, he had he he knows the entertainment. I'm talking about Trey, but he knows the entertainment and he has the memories of being a kid there. Yeah. And he has a kid. Yes. And he's watching it through her eyes and what she wants and what she likes and what she thinks. El amor. I like to drink wine and money is fine. But I like the girls even more. And also, I mean, the other component is the money. There's nobody that had the capital in this horse race the other than them that could have anticipated, could have dealt with what happened with that they were not anticipating, which is what the that's part of the big drama of this movie, right? Is the budget it just keeps, keeps going, going up and going and going and going. And you're like, no one else could have done this. I don't think. Yeah, but just the crazy problems with like the hawks just, you know, continuing to kill oh like the animals and just throwing them on the roof. I'm like, oh, I didn't I didn't know that we had a graveyard up there. That's what I'm feeling. Okay, cool. I, <laughs> That's what I'm breathing in through the HVAC system is all these dead pigeons on the roof that were murdered by a hawk that lives in the bell tower of Casa Bonita. <laughs> That part was crazy to me. Beautiful. You did say something that I think I just want to hit on one more time. Is like his daughter coming and then loving Casa Bonita. And that really yeah. like it, it centers me because it's those. Th I mean, that's sort of why you deal with a lot of a lot of the other stuff is you're making magic moments for the kids um, and you're able to connect the kids to multi-generations. The amount of people that come up to us be like, we took this jail photo 30 years ago and we're rec recreating it now. Uh, and, and the kids that are still kind of scared to go through Black Bart's cave, but they, they're they able to like talk to their mom who also was scared. And even the gorilla, like people were traumatized by Chiquita a, a, a lot, a lot. I, I see it. You know what I mean? I can see 35 year old <laughs> giant men just see the gorilla and just be terrified. They, they see you, their eyes get wide. Instantly, like, go back to being <laughs> just a scared little four-year-old. Uh, and it's nice because we've been re able to sort of heal some of that trauma, I think, and <laughs> and to stop it for the next generation. I, I that's, that's my number one goal. I have two goals, all right? One is to not get my ass grabbed. The second goal is to not get traumatized any children. Um, and so, like... <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's in terms of what, like, like 
there's a new generation that doesn't know that that essence of Casa Manita that's now getting introduced to it. And they're able to, I don't want to say love their parents more, but they're definitely able to relate to them. They have some more shared uh, DNA uh, culturally that I think is beautiful. Yeah, it's a truly special place to take your kids, but it is it is cool. And it's just incredible how well they recreated it from what we know they had to do to it and how much it didn't change. And it just the, the flourishes that they added that are South Parkian or their 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 humor fit. They're perfect. Like the little they were like Black Bart's Cave kind of sucked. And I was like, yeah, it kind of did. And they were like, so we you know, these are the things we actually changed about it or the puppet show or the shooting gallery. Like they just added cool stuff and made it the <laughs> the process that went into the guy in the mines that like if you if you blow the dynamite, the guy wearing the Farrah Fawcett shirt. Oh, yeah. He was like in the fortune teller's box. Like all that was brand new and it fit perfectly into the theming and the feeling. Genius. I, I completely agree. That was something that was that was something that surprised me about the documentary because I remember walking through and thinking like, oh yeah, this is mostly the same, but it's really not. It's they really not. added a ton. Like the the stars on the ceiling, I didn't uh, realize that was new. The volcano in the background, that's new. The whole the idea of like the forced perspective of making the town look bigger with smaller buildings above the yes. the, the town buildings, like that was just like like little touches that I didn't even realize and like. I don't know. I like to think that I'm a pretty observant person about these kind of details, especially walking through Casa Bonita for the first time. I was so tuned to it, but I didn't realize it. And I just, I think they, I mean, we speculated about this for years, but they kept saying change nothing, improve everything. And I think, I think they did it. I think they did it too. It's just incredible. Incredible. I, I agree with you, Paul. I also thought, oh, I remember initially thinking like, man, they just really just, yeah, you wouldn't know it. It was not different, but it is a lot different in really great ways. They didn't change the things you love. They made them cooler. Joshua, what's something you learned that you didn't already know from the doc? You know what it is? It's the it's the separation between Matt and Trey. Like that this really was a, a, a Trey thing and Matt's a good friend. Uh, I, well, I mean, and they've you know done so much great work together that, you know, you sort of get a little bit of that trust. But this was, uh, it's just, it's just amazing to me to like, the actual when you talk about the money, the forty million dollars, like that is it it it's bonkers. And it's gonna be a cultural institution for the Denver Metro, for Colorado for another four decades or five decades or forever, you know? It's something that it's the second oldest building in Lakewood. And it's so crazy. And so it it really is starting to become historic. Um yeah, I don't know. It just it just I really uh uh and then just the how gross it wasn't before i i'm this is gonna i'm gonna feel bad but i never went to the old casa so i don't really know what it like, <gasps> you did i've heard things like it was <laughs> you know what and- i had but i had amnesia like trey must have had because when they're going through talking about how bad it was and showing the carpet i just didn't remember it being that gross <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't remember seeing duct tape no me neither but i know it was there and like to see uh, yeah that the the gross the grossness was when it's it, whatever you thought it was 10 times worse the the, the soda lines where the pop runs through oh, the coke gross. Do you guys remember that Disgusting. we were all drinking that we Ugh. were drinking that that was bananas and i love how people at the, they're like in man on the street interviewing and people are like if that food doesn't come out of a hole in the wall i don't want it <laughs> <laughs> oh that was so beautiful though because the juxtaposition of that clip with then the other guy saying like the food came, comes out of the hole in the wall and i hated it and it was like, oh, these guys have an impossible task ahead of them. Everybody has a different expectation of Casa Bonita. How do you satisfy the people of, yes. of Colorado who grew up with this? And I also just want to say uh, on the, the $40 million, again, like going into it, I think they paid something like $2 million for the business, 3. business out of 3.1 out of bankruptcy. Right. Mm-hmm. And I remember at some point someone asked Matt, like, did you inspect it? And he was like, no, I mean, we, it was sight unseen. It was in auction. Basically, we just had to buy it. So they don't know what it's going to cost until they until they start pulling back the layers. And you keep seeing these moments where the construction, the head of construction is just like, oh, my God, I can't wait to tell them that this is going to cost two million for the HVAC. And a quarter million just to replace the pumps in the pool, not counting the fact that the pool is seeping groundwater into the water. <laughs> like there were these just these moments where there was just like cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And I thought if 
if anyone else had this project, they would have been underwater immediately and they would have had to abandon ship and walk away. And I think there was a little bit of divine intervention here where these two guys that had the A, love for it, and B, the capital for it, were able to see it through to the end. Can you just, I just can't imagine if any, you know, I love the Save Casa Bonita guys. I'm thinking about Andrew Novick and Danny Newman. I can't imagine what they would have gone through if they got to that point and were heartbreakingly like, we don't have $40 million, you know? So I do just think that ultimately something that the Denver metro area and, and lovers of Casa Bonita need to realize is it ended up in the right hands for a lot of reasons, but it was partially because people with the budget carried it through to something that most smart, savvy business people would say, stop right now, run for the hills, get rid of this thing. Well, the Casa Bonita documentary, Casa Bonita Mia Moore, is showing at the Sloan's Lake Alamo Draft House on Thursday of this week. Um, I asked the folks there. They said they're planning to do more screenings at some point later in the fall. I know it's coming to Paramount Plus at some point in the fall. Um, also, Casa Bonita itself is opening for reservations uh, September 16th. You can be able to go go visit for yourself, see all the changes um, in October at some point, but we want to hear from you. Um, have you seen the documentary? I'd love to hear what you all thought. What was new to you? What was interesting to you about it? Um, the pink palace hotline is open as always text or leave us a voicemail with your name and neighborhood at 720-500-5418. Again, that number is 720-500-5418. Brie, final words, Casa Bonita, Mia Moore. Do you want to, you want to give it a rating? <laughs> How many oh my gosh. I mean, I, five for a doc five out of five for a documentary i thought it was great i thought uh you'll love the vintage footage that they pull up you'll love oh, Ricardo seeing Montalban. yeah the, the, these the the hilarious like at casa bonita these like bizarre commercials that like i don't remember ever seeing but like um but yeah i thought it was i thought it was a phenomenal documentary front to back they did oh also at the end there's this beautiful part at the end that i don't want to to ruin but trey has a moment that you watch him have in real time and it's 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 beautiful and kind of heartbreaking joshua you your, your final videos. review how many sopa pias sopa pias yeah i'll give it five sopa pias i liked it a lot uh yeah uh and if there's one thing i want everybody uh listening to to know hey be nice to the gorilla all right next time you see them <laughs> <laughs> please please be, there's a person in there and it might be Joshua or some other very nice girls. Yeah, we have autonomy. <laughs> Octopus sleeping in the bay. Octopus wake up and greet the day. Time to tell the guitars and sleepy old stars to be on their way. Such a beautiful morning for a holiday. Now, come on. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute and tell Matt and Trey about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you then. Look, here comes the sun. Octopus, it's a day for fun. Trey, Hollywood didn't change that guy. Oh, he no. He dresses like a Colorado <laughs> guy. He's like, Rocky shirt, cargo shorts, flip-flops, yeah. steamboat, random steamboat shirt. Just like. Yeah. The Colorado t-shirts. I, they was, I it loved was good. it. I was like, he's our guy. This is our guy. <laughs>